We have seen the billionaires that oiled our just concluded general elections being recycled into public offices. This, to some extent, the involvement in the election flouted the Elections Act of 2011. But the question that this raises is, is our representative democracy under threat? This is Bold Analysis, and my name is Kevin Udwar. I spoke to campaign manager of Senator Aspirant back in my county, and he acknowledged that, Kevin, to the last five days of our campaign, we lost it because we didn't have money. And despite of having a very colorful manifesto that they could share with the people, but in the rural setup, he actually told me that money speaks best the last minute. It's so the last minute the voters forgot about them. Kenyans, we have a representative democracy. And so what that means is that we, the citizens, vote the leaders. Elected leaders exercise sovereign power on behalf of the electorate. Apart from the foreign billionaires that inject uh, their funds in our electoral system, we have seen a confession that 18 billion was offered as grant to the IBC in the last general election. We also have the local oligarchs that are also pumping their cash in this with a reward at the end or after the election. This is not something that is starting just in the just concluded election. We've had this cycle for the last general elections that I have witnessed when I'm alive. The fact that money and people or few individuals are procuring and processing your leader to that National Assembly or as a governor or a senator somewhere really stands the risk of limiting your freedom or rather the freedom of the leader to represent you. And I want to put it as it is. The political parties successfully used as ventilators to confine your choice. Many times you'll be told that unless in this stronghold, if you don't have party A ticket, you can't get it. And if you don't have the other P ticket, to an extent that even hostility is meted on you because you are not conforming to the patterns of the day. So we've seen discussions on this is an ODM zone, there's a UDA zone, there's a Jubilee zone, and so on so forth. What was envisioned as party democracy often is normally flouted and breached to serve individual personal interests at the expense of democracy of the common person to choose the person he thinks is going to. And if you think this is an overstatement, then look at what is happening in Meru, where independent thinkers, those people who are seem to have come to the office without the blessings of the oligarchs, are fought to the tooth. Kawira Mungaza is just an example. I also want to take you to another place. This is Kese's constituency. Mishra was vying against UDA candidate, and the residents of Kese's towards the last general election acknowledged that the MP had done enough in terms of philanthropic work and what he was doing for the people. Just two months after election, newspaper headlines in this country have been running stories, newspapers have been running stories, that residents of cases are actually regretting and wailing that the philanthropy 
activities that they used to receive under courtesy of the previous member of parliament are now drying up and things are thick. Do you know why Kesses Mishra did not get that seat? He did not get that seat, not because he was a wrong candidate, but because the oligarchs made sure that political party euphoria is what determines, determines the politics of the day. I, and this has truly been seen. I don't want to lose my line of thought. I want to take you to a point that you really need to acknowledge that our democracy, as we've had a lot of safeguards, legislative safeguards are here. And there are also the natural laws on how we are supposed to choose our leaders. But that prescription is never enough. You know why? In this country, we have a pool of young people. These young people are gullible to manipulation because by the financial aspects in campaign. I just started by the story about my campaign, a campaign manager of a senator candidate back in my county of CIA. And he acknowledged that, Kevin, yes, young people, when you campaign and you make a stopover, before you say anything, in the law they say, Jamna. So you give them, you give them some notes, 50, 100 notes. That's, it's from there that you start. And they are the majority. And that exactly has become a problem compared to a little bit senior citizens, the people from 40s and above would make that judgment. I want to say that our democracy is under threat because the majority of the young people that are voting are probably majority of voters. But with the money pumping or being oiled in our elections, they are the ones that are key decision makers. Someone once argued, do we have quality voters on the ballot or we already have voters that we vote with the money? If you want to know the election was centered on money, my good friend tells me that what was once Pesa Mfukoni has changed to Pesa Mafichoni because it was about money, but then the money is not there. I want to ask you a question. So who is your MP representing? Who is your president representing? And better still, who is your governor? representing. This is a very sober discussion that you just need to join the dots yourself and ask these questions. You will realize that the decisions or rather what is splashed in campaign trail as a manifesto is simply a document for posturing behind you, uh, before you so that it's just done as Ordinarily, because it's part of the election process, we've had a culture that when we are campaigning, we must have a manifesto. It's not an overstatement, or rather it's not an understatement to say that that is just a document. It is just a document. The resultant governance altercation, or rather alteration, that you will see is the fact that your leader will depart from that manifesto and really move into things. I just want to pause there and ask you a question. Take a copy of Azimula Humwaja manifesto and take a copy of Kenya Kwanza manifesto. They are online, you can get the soft copy and if you can't, I have one I can share with you. And I want you to just do a, a fact check between manufacturing pitch, agriculture pitch, uh, economy pitch and every pitch and health pitch. Then measure it with what is happening now. As I talk to you analyzing this video, the nurse, the doctors have issued a strike notice on 23rd of January. We were in all in this country when a charter was signed between Kenya Kwanzaa and the doctors.
we are now talking about shortage of teachers. We were all in this country when a charter was signed between Kenya Kwanza and the teachers of this country. I will not mention about the others, but if you find it yourself, you'll also realize that oligarchs are the powers behind policies. There are policies that are coming up that they don't serve your interest. I can tell you. There is a recent consistent uh, pattern or rather consistent uh, pronouncement that you're making. We seem to be privatizing government entities. We seem to be privatizing or even selling government shares in institutions. What does that mean? Can you buy? You cannot. And even if we were to privatize, you cannot get it. It's the oligarchs. That is why I maintain that what we have as a representative democracy, I don't think we still have. Our democracy is still way far. And America telling us that we are one of the mature democracies? No, it's lying to us. But simply an atupaka mafuta so that we see it's different. A short story. America just came out of the midterm elections. And I, I, I was reading, uh, I think, an article in the New York Times that, you know, it's the elections were federal governments. They hold, if I'm getting it wrong, someone will tell the comments, but they hold the elections separately with different codes and protocols. In terms of Zilla rules in a governed elections in federal A are not necessarily example the same as what is governing in another federal. So when it was done, I, I was reading that in one place, I think that was not here, not here, there's, is it Georgia or someone? somewhere i think i'm not wrong ohio not ohio i think there is georgia yeah so they were saying that those who are vying there is what is called code enforcement code enforcement is just officers that are making sure that the political class are aligning themselves with the code of conduct during that electioneering period in terms of when you organize the meetings some are saying that the this capture the, 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 the only gags that are capturing elections or rather sponsoring elections, apart from even sponsoring you, the candidate, they even go and capture the security uh, team so that at a kupanga your meetings, it becomes a bit of a problem. And it happens here where you realize that you cannot do your meetings in peace because unapanga hapa, chief anakombea hapa hata una license. So you even realize that these oligarchs have even captured the regulatory teams of the regulatory bodies like even uh, the police. So this also creates one of the tragedies that we've had in this country. Misleading public information and this limits your, chan this limits your chances of a fair choice. Why am I saying Processing a candidate is not a joke. I'm trying to process my candidate for a seat back in CIA. And you will find out, you, when you talk to people that are in elective politics, they will tell you processing your candidate is a different thing. I, I'm tempted to say, no, I don't want to lie. I don't want to tell people things I can't do. But you'll be told that's what it is. And you simply, you lose yourself. You lose, you know, at, at campaign, look at President William Ruto. Is that the man you're seeing now? There seems to be, things seems to be changing. The man who could talk tough and say, I'm going to solve all the problems. That is how he's, he was processing his candidature for presidency. But when it comes to presidency, it's totally a different thing. So that is what happens because the oligarchs have taken you they've given you funds they're telling you be who you can it is that that will even make you to do things you know you have to process your candidature ladies and gentlemen so are we yet there <laughs> if you make your honest assessment are we yet there who is processing your candidate? Who is processing your candidate? Because uh, this is a, a question. I, I know it, we're going to not solve it today. 
because the oligarchs are about interests. And we're going to not say that, okay, from there, this is what you can do in solve that. That is why I insist. And I say that the Kenyan people must have the culture of listening to divergent views. We must not be conformity. We must not conform. If there is an independent candidate, listen to what someone is bringing on board. Even if you are from another place, you have another candidate saying this, why do you think Shakir Shabir is elected in Kisumu Town East place? I used to say, by the way, he used to be my MP because I used to stay somewhere called Koyango. Koyango is in Kisumu Town East for people who stay in Kisumu. It's because of what he stands for. What do your leader stand for? Have you ever voted on what the leader stands for? Not yet. To a democracy. But is this the beginning of the end of democracy? Thank you.